At equilibrium, the pressure is constant and is called the vapor pressure of the liquid at that temperature. If we place a liquid in a vacuum, evaporation will start and at this point, the rate of vaporization is greater than the rate of condensation. As time progresses, there will be more particles in the gaseous state and ultimately, there will come a point where the rate of vaporization is equal to the rate of condensation. This point is at equilibrium and the pressure exerted by the gas is called the vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is proportional to temperature. The higher the temperature, the greater the gas pressure or the vapor pressure. The weaker the intermolecular forces of the substance, the higher the vapor pressure. The plot of vapor pressure and temperature show nonlinear relationship. The Clausius Clapeyron equation converts this nonlinear relationship into a linear one, where R is the universal gas constant, 8.3145 joules per mole per Kelvin. Again, this is a linear equation, and if two points are taken, we can have this new formula. And this will allow us calculations of pressures and temperatures if the other points are given. Boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the external pressure. If the external pressure is 760 torr, this is equal to one atmosphere, then we can have the normal boiling points of substances. For diethyl ether, this is at 34.5 degrees Celsius, for ethanol, 78.3 degrees Celsius, and for water, 100 degrees Celsius. You will also notice here that at any given temperature, the less polar diethyl ether has the highest vapor pressure of the three substances. Normal boiling point is observed at one atmosphere. We also have Trotton's rule, which states that at their normal boiling points, many liquids have an entropy of vaporization approximately equal to 87 joules per mole per Kelvin. This may be used to estimate the heat of vaporization of liquids with known boiling points. As you know, boiling of substances is an equilibrium condition, and so delta G, the change in Gibbs free energy, is equal to zero. Hence, we can rearrange this formula into this one. If delta S of vaporization is equal to 87 joules per mole per Kelvin, and the boiling temperature is known, then we can have an estimate of the heat of vaporization. Take note that those liquids with significant special interactions, for example, hydrogen bonding, do not follow Trotton's rule. Water, ethanol, formic acid, and hydrogen fluoride do not follow this rule. Distillation is a vapor pressure phenomenon. Distillation separates liquid mixtures based on the differences in boiling points of the component. A good example here is the fractional distillation of crude oil. As heated crude oil passes through this system, the vaporized crude oil can condense at different temperatures. Hence, they can be separated.
Exercise 2. The vapor pressure of ethanol is 115 torr at 34.9 degrees Celsius. If the heat of vaporization of ethanol is 40.5 kJ per mole, calculate the temperature when the vapor pressure is 760 torr. Here we can use the clausius clapeyron equation. P1 and T1 are given, that is 115 torr and 34.9 degrees Celsius. P2 is also given, that is 760 torr. What is required is T2. If we rearrange this equation such that this term here is placed on the left side, we will get this new relationship. T1 is in degrees Celsius, so we need to convert it to Kelvin. Just add 273.15 to that value, and you will get 308.0 Kelvin. Just need to plug in all the values, cancel all the units, and we will get 0 0.002859 per Kelvin. Taking the inverse of this relation, 349.8 Kelvin is obtained. This is equivalent to 76.6 degrees Celsius. Number 2. The normal boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius at 760 torr. In Benguet, the atmospheric pressure is 630 torr. At what temperature does water boil in Benguet given that the heat of vaporization of water is 40.7 kJ per mole? I will leave this question for you to answer. The procedure is very similar to item number 1. Normal melting point is observed at one atmosphere. Melting point increases as the strength of intermolecular attractions increase. Molecules that stack easily also solidify easily. Consider the melting and boiling points of these alcohols with increasing number of carbons. Here you will see that boiling point increase as the number of carbons increase. If you compare the melting points, there is a decrease in value as we go from methanol to ethanol to propanol. For the 4-carbon butanol, the melting point increases and the increasing trend is maintained by the 5-carbon pentanol. What is going on here? The stacking could be the reason. Generally, we would expect the melting point to increase the same way as boiling point does. This unusual downtrend can be attributed to the stacking or packing of the solids. Propanol is probably packed less efficiently compared to methanol, so it can easily melt. The nonpolar carbon chain disrupts the hydrogen bonding network as the solid is formed. As more carbons are added, intermolecular attractions increase which are related to the increase in molar mass, and they become dominant, increasing the trend in melting point. Pressure affects melting point only very slightly, but directly affects the volume of the phases. Hence, the temperature at which it melts or crystallizes. 
we can use here the Clapeyron equation. In this equation, delta V of fusion is equal to the volume of the liquid minus the volume of the solid. Dry ice or solid carbon dioxide, iodine, and solid room deodorizers sublime at ordinary conditions. We can see the sublimation here in the case of iodine. There is a large effect of temperature on vapor pressure and this is similar to liquid to gas transition. For solid gas equilibria, the clausius clapeyron equation can also apply. But instead of the heat of vaporization, the heat of sublimation is utilized. Phase diagrams combine liquid gas, solid liquid, and solid gas curves. And this is a graph of pressure versus temperature. It shows regions of each stable phase and the lines corresponding to phase transitions. In phase diagrams, we can determine specific points of corresponding temperatures and pressures. At one atmospheric pressure and negative 78 degrees Celsius, solid carbon dioxide transitions to a gas. Solid water, on the other hand, will be converted at 0 degrees Celsius to a liquid and then to a gas at 100 degrees Celsius. Note that water expands on freezing, causing the solid to be less dense than the liquid. The increase in pressure favors the phase that occupy less space. Hence, as you increase the pressure, solid water, or ice, melts into liquid. The phase diagram also shows triple points. This is the pressure and temperature at which three phases are in equilibrium. At 0 0.01 degrees Celsius, and 0 0.006 atmosphere, there is a solid, liquid, and gas present at this point, and they are all in equilibrium. The liquid and gas line ends at the critical point. Here we have a critical temperature and a critical pressure. At the critical point, the densities of liquid and vapor phases are equal. The phase boundary disappears, forming a supercritical fluid. Here are some critical temperatures and critical pressures. Take note that we have permanent gases, they cannot be liquefied at 25 degrees Celsius, their critical temperatures are very low. Non-permanent gases can be liquefied at 25 degrees Celsius, their critical temperatures are close to 25 degrees Celsius. Refer to the phase diagram of sulfur below. How many triple points are there for sulfur? The triple points for sulfur are here, here, and here. Thus, there are three triple points for sulfur. Which phases are present at each triple point? At this triple point, 
The rhombic phase is present, the monoclinic phase is present, and the gas phase is present. They are all in equilibrium at this triple point. Perhaps you could also identify the phases present at this triple point and this triple point. Give the approximate temperature and pressure at each triple point. At this triple point, the pressure is about 5 times 10 to the minus 6 atmospheres. And the temperature is about 95 degrees Celsius. Perhaps you can give the approximate temperatures and pressures at these triple points. What physical state should be present at 10 to the minus 5 atmosphere and 80 degrees Celsius? 10 to the minus 5 atmosphere and 80 degrees Celsius is about here. As you will see at this region, the rhombic phase is present. How about at 1 atmosphere and 140 degrees Celsius? 1 atmosphere 140 degrees Celsius. Liquid sulfur is present at that condition.